welcoming uh, Billy Ristuccia. Am I pronouncing it correctly, Billy? You did. <laughs> Someone who uh, has contributed a lot to our community uh, with uh, historical facts and translations. I've been following your contributions on the history of Shiatsu page. And I reached out to have you as a guest here and to share with us your uh, knowledge and uh, your wisdom. Uh, so I'm so happy to have you, Billy, from Arizona. USA. It is my absolute pleasure and honor to, to be invited to something like this uh, uh, and have the opportunity. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And for all those people that are joining us live, if you can let us also know where you're from and uh, like this video, share it, that'll be great. It helps out. Uh, to start with, uh, Maybe I'll go through some of the logistics first before we get into it. Uh, when you join, uh, please mute your screen so a background noise does not affect the recording and the live stream. Uh, please, uh, if you need to eat, uh, for some of you it's dinner time or lunch time, uh, you can still eat, but just turn off your screens. And we're gonna leave ample time for some questions and contributions from uh, from all of you. And and just be patient, it's still uh, new for me. I'm doing my best. I know last week we had a little bit of a technical issue, so please forgive me. And I'll just try and get better and better every week. So we'll just get into it. Uh, Billy, if you can share with us maybe to start with, uh, you know, what, what brought you to the healing arts and in particular Japanese healing arts and, and how did it all start for you? So I was born, no, um, uh, I started uh, my interest in uh, Japanese arts uh, through martial arts uh, back in uh, 1976, 77. Um, I uh, got involved with uh, a very great teacher in my life and a uh, life mentor, uh, Mike DePasquale Sr. Uh, when I was living in New Jersey. Um, and so he had uh, a lot of training in old forms of Japanese uh, martial arts, uh, jujitsu and uh, kind of some of their related arts, judo, karate and whatnot. But uh, he was primarily a, uh, uh, a Japanese uh, jiu-jitsu instructor uh, in New Jersey on the East Coast. And in with some of those uh, styles of uh, old styles of jiu-jitsu, um, a lot of uh, oriental medicine, uh, philosophy, principles, spirituality, um, and life ways are, are taught. And so as I was studying martial arts, I was uh, heavily exposed um, to uh, different forms of uh, uh, Japanese medicine and specifically Japanese bodywork uh, in the form of, uh, we've talked about this, of uh, Koho uh, Shiatsu Igaku uh, from uh, Okoyama Ryuho, the uh, founder of uh, Hakoryu Jujutsu. And, um, I think people have started to uh, get some insight about how uh, Koho Shiatsu um, is actually one of the uh, primary forms of Shiatsu in Japan. However, it's not something that you could go to a public institute and study. So they're kind of uh, in, in, in the background of Shiatsu development, even in Japan. Uh, you have uh, Namakoshi's Institute that uh, really spear fronted uh, a lot of the public training and the public face of shiatsu um, besides uh, prior to these schools uh, with uh, Tom Pecky uh, in his work and uh, Kazuma who may have predated Tom Pecky in his work as well as we're, as we're learning. Um, that's kind of how I got started and uh and then from there 
uh, after studying in New Jersey, branching out and really seeking out uh, more targeted uh, training in Japanese medicine and, and then kind of came on, uh, stumbled upon, if you will, uh, uh, Anma, um, uh, kind of the mother art to Shiatsu. Uh, and I, I was just, I was hooked <laughs> when, when I originally uh, saw Anma demonstrated uh, saw the presence of it, the depth of it, and the kind of connection that was made. It was so much so like uh, the old forms of jujitsu and philosophy um, that uh, I, I knew I kind of found my home. Um, that's kind of how I got started. Yeah. So what, what in particular resonated uh, for you? You uh, say you got hooked onto it. Was it the, the philosophy or or the uh, techniques, the, the way of uh, treating the body? Uh, in, uh, in martial arts, uh, for anyone that studied a correct martial art, we know that posturing and how you hold yourself and the type of alignment that you can make and the connection and the, and the presence that you need to put out there sometimes or even retreat away from these are the same exact points uh that were demonstrated uh when i first met uh another teacher of mine uh gary bernard who ran the anma institute of traditional japanese massage uh that was uh running uh in the uh kabuki theaters in uh Japantown in San Francisco. Um, uh, they uh, had, uh, at that time, the only sanctioned Japanese hot springs, the Kabuki Hot Springs, was downstairs along the street. And the Anma Institute was set up by a Japanese doctor who came over from Japan and uh, trained uh, David Palmer, the founder of Chair Massage for Planet Earth. Uh, who was the original um, the original head of the Anma Institute? So Takashi Nakamura uh, came over from a school in uh, I believe Osaka, Japan, taught uh, David Palmer to be able to provide a local source of Anma therapists uh, for the Kabuki Hot Springs uh, downstairs, so that the, uh, an authentic hot spring should have an authentic therapy from Japan uh, and. This is really some of uh, the orig originating source, uh, besides a couple of other uh, key uh, Japanese uh, doctors that were in the United States, actually in California, um, uh, that uh, how Anma really uh, uh, came into the United States. Um, and so I was fortunate to be able to study at that institute. And seeing Gary Bernard, uh, the second head of the Anma Institute, um, my direct teacher, seeing his connection. Uh, at that time, they, uh, the base course was uh, taught around a massage table as opposed to more traditionally uh, on the floor on a, on a futon. Um, and uh, his, his body alignment, his presence, uh, the smoothness of technique. I love Japanese drumming, uh, ko, uh, koto and uh, and different forms of uh, Japanese uh, taiko uh, drumming. Uh, um, and uh, even their body alignment, their training uh, uh, that you see, if anyone's seen taiko drummers, uh, all, a really authentic group from Japan, uh, Kodo, Onde Koza, the Heart uh, Demon, uh, Heartbeat Drummers of Japan, these different groups, uh, the, the type of presence that they have, everything is sweated into the, the training, and uh, this is how uh, Anma training is done. Uh, uh, very hardcore body alignment, physical, very yang or, or yo style of training, and I've tried to express this in a, a number of uh, the history posts on the uh, history of shiatsu that uh, uh, a lot of the training is a lot like training uh, of an athlete uh, 
but uh, like an internal athlete, a lot of physical uh, hand skill development is done. Uh, so we say that we we train up, so that we work when we work on a on a, on a patient on a client. Uh, that that's like the easy peasy stuff is. So uh, we train ourselves very high, but when we work, that shouldn't be very taxing for us, right? A lot of therapists get uh, kind of burnout or they do a lot of transference. They collect a lot of issues from their client and they, they almost take that on themselves. And uh, this is uh, what we call kinjite. Uh, uh, they're kind of like forbidden subjects. Uh, these are things that we shouldn't do. Uh, but often can happen uh, the more that we care. Sometimes we care too much and we end up taking on too much ourselves uh, from patients. Um, so anyway, <laughs> coming back, I have a tendency of doing that. Uh, I have to be careful of ramp. Okay, I'll, I'll put you on the uh, spot here. And so Gary Bernard was a very big uh, um, uh, changing force in my life to go, uh, hey, I was looking at going into uh, uh, chiropractic school, uh, specifically uh, uh, chiropractic school in California that had a lineage uh, to the founder of chiropractor, uh, David Palmer, a different David Palmer um, uh, from Palmer Chiropractics. I was looking to do chiropractic school, but when I uh, saw uh, Gary Bernard and him do that line, of uh, Nakamura style of online, if you will, uh, I was I was taught it was just an instant mutual connection between all of what I had been studying from Japan martial art wise already, um, the form of koho shiatsu from Hapoyu Jiu Jitsu that I had learned. It was just uh, such a synchronicity. Whereas other styles of shiatsu, uh, I had uh, just previous to that, I had visited. Um, another Shiatsu Institute uh, in uh, Berkeley, California, uh, who that man, uh, Michael Reed Gaka, was a student of uh, Ohashi Sensei. Um, and uh, as beautiful as uh, training as they had going on, um, there was a disconnect for me from what I had been experiencing in Japan myself. Uh, and then so I was like, should I join their school? Should I not? And it was actually downstairs at Michael Reed Gox Shiatsu Institute in Berkeley that I saw the flyer for the online institute and uh, went to go visit that and was just blown away. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I think I covered that question. That's Sorry. Uh, I've, you know, I've been so fascinated with your posts. Uh, at, at Ivan's uh, history of Shiatsu page and bringing as uh, in a way the, the the missing links or the missing pieces uh, 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 to our history uh, of, of Shiatsu uh, maybe you can uh, it's a, a kind of two-part question is that uh, why why you in particular are so interested in in the history of the healing arts and, and Shiatsu and and maybe you can, I know uh, we don't want to go too long into it uh, because that could be just a, an hour spent just on that question or maybe a day. But uh, what's your take on the chronological, uh, historical uh, uh, facts uh, in, in, in the movement of Japanese arts and, and the creation of Shiatsu? If you can share some, some of that, that'll be great. Um. Okay, first off, uh, with teachers that I've been exposed to and life mentors that I've been exposed to, um, I think an important point here is that the same way that when we see a client, a patient, a friend, a family member underneath our touching tools, underneath our hands, our knees, our feet, whatever your touching tool may be, hopefully not just your thumbs, um, that we have to research their history to be able to find the truth. We have to research their history to be able to find the root. So this is why I study the history of Anma, Shiatsu, Seitai, Seikotsu, and so many other Japanese arts that I have a passion for, because I, I think 
that it's the same way of uh, diagnosing ourselves and a, and a client or a patient is that we have to research the history. And so if I want to know the truth of an art that I, that I love and I care about and I want to get better at, I have to research the history of that as well, the same way that I have to research the history uh, of a client or a patient. Um, not that I consider myself a historian at all. I just happen to speak, um, be able to read some and write some and understand some um, uh, of the Japanese language. And so that kind of opens up what I would call first source material. Um, so first source material being Tom Pecky's Shiatsu book. Right? Wow. So we've got Beautiful. Uh, a very old uh, uh, copy of uh, Tom Pecky's uh, Shiatsu book. Um, and so being able to look at that and being able to look at, whoa, wait a minute, there's a lot more to Shiatsu than just the, the pressing of the points, the, the treatment of meridians. We've got anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, psychology, the study of metabolism, uh, reproductive study, uh, hormonal study, and, and not, there's a big mistake that people have made. They look at these chapters in these books, and I really want to clarify this, that just because there may be Western termed um, chapters in some of these historic books, that does not mean that the philosophy for, say, respiratory organs or cardiovascular organs or reproductive organs that everything in those chapters is just going to be western based science that's that would be a very big mistake to to see those chapters in these historic works and and just say okay hey we don't need to look at that because a lot of a lot of modern uh, research and a lot of modern science has really updated these. You really need to look back at the philosophy of how they were looking at these Western forms of, of science, but with Eastern philosophy and medicine put on that, right? So you have, for instance, the Zofu, uh, the internal organs. So for we, right? So the internal organs in in uh, you know East Asian, Oriental, Japanese medicine, Chinese medicine, Korean medicine, and even uh, Hindu medicine, forms of medicine in India that I also have uh, some training and uh, a love for, you, you can really see where they're kind of going with that, that matches the philosophy of other chapters uh, in these historical works. Um, and so, that's why I like to study um, outside of just physical techniques, if you will. So to be able to understand what even my teachers are, are telling me is even more important than just technique, uh, the spirit of it, the psychology of it, the emotional balance that we have to build up ourselves. You know, you can see all of this truth to how they are really trying to teach people over in Japan, uh, especially in older schools, older traditions, uh, and sometimes even family traditions uh, of teaching um, that, uh, right, it's not just technique, uh, it's not just book learning. Um, and so this is really the driving force of why I study in the way that I do. Uh, if that Hopefully answers yeah, that, the that answers the, the first so part. The second part, part, if you could if you could take us through, you know, again, your 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 findings and, and your translations of some books of, of some major um, I guess dates uh, and periods of time, how really the history of Shiatsu has been shaped because again there's so much uh, that is not known in our community. And it's not up to a certain point uh, and not much beyond. Uh, so if you can share some light on that, that'll be great. Okay. So me primarily being uh, an anmashi, an anma therapist. Um, 
what how I would approach this is that um, and I need to be careful here I want uh, especially people that are primarily shiatsu therapists uh, this has been expressed in ways and people it shouldn't be understood in any kind of condescending way at all it just it is it is what it is um, if uh, original anma uh, coming from China uh, being Anmo. Uh, Anmo is probably one of the oldest forms of body work uh, on planet Earth. And there's even some sy uh, synchronicity with the term Anma and Anmo uh, linguistic wise, connecting all the way back to India and their forms of medicine. And we definitely know that doctors in India made it over to China. Uh, both martial art practitioners, spiritual practitioners, medi uh, medical practitioners uh, interacted and made it into China. And that history is yet to be uh, put out there in the public in an accurate manner. Um, now, in China, Anma or Anmo developed uh, as a all-encompassing uh, type of therapy. In China, uh, there were seven major uh, categories of training. Uh, these are the seven major categories in Western uh, body work. Okay, so you see stroking, tapotment, effleurage, so on and so forth. They're the same exact terms. That's not coincidence <laughs> because the same terms that you see in Swedish massage are actually the terms taken from Anma. So you have a very big connection from uh, uh, Chinese Anmo, Chinese Tuina, and Japanese Anma that made it into uh, Swedish gymnastics uh, and therapy training uh, from Park Henrik Ling and the Ling system of massage. And so my point here is that Anma has uh, these major categories. There are seven major categories uh, in Chinese tradition of Anmo uh, and also in the Korean, uh, which is pronounced Anma as well as in Japan, it's also pronounced Anma. Um, uh, so there's seven categories of uh, technique in China, Korean, but there are nine categories uh, in Japan. In Japan, uh, other categories of techniques were added uh, later on and due to the development of medicine uh, and culture and, and whatnot uh, that uh, make uh, the Japanese version uh, a little uh, even uh, uh, differentiated from Korea and from China. Uh, there's further development of Anma uh, in, in, uh, in Japan. Um, a lot of Anmo uh, has sort of uh, died down in China where it was replaced uh, by Tuina. Uh, Tuina originally started as a trauma-based specialization uh, of compartments of training from Anmo uh, certain categories of techniques of Anmo were pulled out, specialized, honed to make a trauma-based uh, therapy, and that is what became uh, Tuina. Uh, Tuina is not Anmo. It is a specialization off of Anmo. And I wanted to point that out because in a similar manner, this is what happened in Japan for different reasons than in China, but in Japan, we have, uh, hello, all the way there in Holland. <laughs> it's like, I just looked over at the chat and there's a ton of people sending me messages from Facebook in, in here. Um, so in Japan, uh, Shiatsu developed out of Anma techniques. Uh, this is a very important principle to understand. If you have nine major categories of technique in Anma, uh, when it comes to physical technique, 
uh, alone, not any of the other compartments uh, in the art of, of Anma. Um, those physical categories of techniques, uh, shiatsu is a specialization you, of really one technique, actually more like three. Three major categories of Anma technique were pulled out of Anma and the entire art of shiatsu is that. One of my teachers used to say that shiatsu is one ninth of what is contained in uh, the older uh, Anma traditions uh, in Japan. Interesting. What, what and that's the point I want to make. Uh, one second. That's, yeah. that's what I want people to understand, that that should not be taken in any kind of condescending manner. What shiatsu therapists are doing is only one ninth of what they really could be doing. I, I've had to fight against this for so many years um, that even there's so much power in Anma technique that even if you were to master one category of it, you could make an entire new therapy. We see this in the art of seikotsu, uh, bone setting and bandaging. Uh, there are categories in Anma techniques that made it into the art of seikotsu. Uh, and this also holds true for the art of seitai uh, and that form of correcting the body, seitai, uh, to correct the body. Um, uh, even though that, uh, that has a very deep link itself to uh, an art uh, from Shaolin therapies, Shaolin temple therapies, and how those came all the way into uh, Japan later on. Um, uh, there's also uh, Anma influence and also very big uh, Taoist uh, principles uh, are also uh, in original Japanese therapies that are also inside of Shiatsu uh, uh, because of, you know, uh, it's linked back to Anma. Um, and so that's kind of how I would paint that picture. Um, and then for whatever reasons in uh, Japanese Japan, uh, Japan's history, um, whether it be during certain uh, world wars or, uh, or prior to that, where a lot of regulations uh, were starting to hit uh, Japanese medicine and therapies, uh, actually kind of stunting the growth, if you will, um, of Japanese medicine, right? So uh, there's always a, a, a high point and a low point in anything uh, as, I, as I've done research. This holds true, uh, especially in China and, and in Japan. Uh, in Korea, there's, they have a, a whole unique uh, history there as well. And I don't think any of that I've ever even brought up, um, but uh, kind of a waxing and waning in, uh, in uh, East Asian medicine, Oriental medicine. Uh, Chinese medicine, Japanese medicine, uh, high points in its development and low points. And during those low points, uh, a lot of regulations actually created those low points in medicine. Um, created low points because uh, a lot of traditional aspects were almost viewed upon as uh, kind of folk medicine or what's the term I'm looking for? Um, kind of mystical belief uh blind belief and hey, we need to focus on things that can be more scientifically proven uh and then so some early on shiatsu there were uh there was interaction between um namakoshi and okuyama sensei namakoshi sensei uh hey we want more western proven uh influences no we need to keep uh you know, more of the traditional uh, route. And, and so we have an interaction with these two men. And now we, we've moved from one time period where heavy regulations were coming on uh, for all of uh, Oreo medicine, uh, spiritual practices and things in the public. And then we're moving on to uh, a next phase. So there's, there's two there. There's, uh, and then during this time period, um, uh, we, we also have, hey, we're going to make a lot of body work uh, uh, modality for, for the blind. Great for, for 
uh, the blind community in Japan. However, that actually also made a lot of therapy, uh, physical therapy, if you will, uh, take a dip uh, in its development um, because of um, uh, their limitations. However, <laughs> I have to say that one of my teachers in Japan uh, and here in the United States, uh, hidden away in uh, Chinatown in LA. Uh, this woman, she was blind, but she can see better than I ever will. Uh, this particular woman, her, her sensitivity, not having her eyes as an obstacle, really pushed her, her other senses, uh, <laughs> what she could pick up. Uh, she was an, another Anma teacher of mine, and uh, she, she, she was not able to look around the room and go, your, your physical technique, you are doing this wrong. Your posture is wrong. You, you, you're, she would listen to the technique and say, Mr. Astucia, your technique, it's not good. It's all wrong. And, and I'm going, how do you know? And she would never tell me. How do you, I, and I would always, how do you know I'm doing that wrong? It was the sound of the technique. How, how I'm pressing into someone's body. How I might be doing uh, uh, a percussion technique. Uh, this is a very unique uh, style of percussion. Uh, very difficult for me to do on camera here. Um, uh, called shukendaho. A loose wrist percussion where uh, the pinky bone uh, is uh, struck into the body and my thumb has to make a sound. Um, very difficult to get across we can hear that, <laughs> on a yeah. video. Very difficult to get across, but there's a every technique that we do as shiatsu practitioners, seitai practitioners, anma practitioners, every technique when done on a human body has a sound. The sound of the of your patient, your client's breathing, the sound of your breathing, and that the sound of it was so heightened uh, for this woman that she was able to correct everyone in the room. Uh, that's very different than just putting on a blindfold and trying to work and probably so many therapists going through schools in your own respective states and countries how many people can raise their hand and say, yeah, I had a good teacher and they had us work blindfold. Uh, I, I hope your, your teacher has. And if you've never worked that way, great. Block your eyes for, you know, a month and, and see, you know, and during this pandemic that we have worldwide, you know, I hope everyone can start to, to give good therapy again and, 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 you know, be able to work on, each other in, in a healthy manner again and stay safe. But being able to block your eyes and work for a week and but live that way, sleep that way, wake up that way, do your ADLs, your everyday living uh, uh, that way, not just work on someone. Uh, you know that that's a, a fantastic training. Uh, I did that for three months. Wow. Um, and uh, it was very painful. <laughs> so uh, a true master to those with what we call a handicap mm, yeah that's i would say that's pretty condescending uh they may have a handicap but they have uh you know <laughs> to be able to feel around and sense around to be able to have those heightened senses this is how my martial arts teachers and my, my medicine teachers uh in anma uh this is how we were trained to be able to take even one sense smell hearing uh touching a whole body sense and other senses and and push them to an extreme uh if we can't push a sense to an extreme we we really have no business doing diagnosis or shindan ho this is why the categories the yon shin ho the four main categories of diagnosis are named after senses uh, diagnosis by hearing, diagnosing by touch, diagnosing by 
smell. Uh, these are all named after our senses. The idea is literally to do your own training like it's an esoteric asceticism, like living up in the mountains like an, an ascetic, uh, and be able to push that one uh, sense so much so that it almost develops into a super sense. I think uh, older uh, doctors and practitioners uh, did these types of things. And I think we need to pull that even more into our modern schooling, uh, the way that they studied uh, the Kopo way, the old way, as opposed to a uh, newer way. Um, newer way, uh, you know, we, we have a, a license, a certification. We go to school for a certain set amount of hours. We get our license. We're now practitioners. And we begin to work. We studied some books. Beautiful. It has some good points, and it also has some bad points. <laughs> um, and uh, how many? How many? I'm sure, there was an original you, question, and I hope I touched on it. So, <laughs> I did my I did my bad point again. You you I'm did sorry. your best, and you gave us you gave us a lot there to to chew on. The interesting part was uh, what you mentioned about Chiatsu being a uh, in a way a, a subset of Anma uh, and the, the richness. Lots of points in in Anma. Yeah, and maybe one to three in original shiatsu. Uh, when it comes to physical technique, and even even original shiatsu technique actually looked more like anma technique. Um, original shiatsu original shiatsu's pressure method was not a stationary uh, press into the body. Um, so if this is uh, the skin and Right, and then we have a tsubo, uh, right? And there's a meridian line, there's the skin, and there's the tsubo. And we have to press into the tsubo to reach the, the river underneath. This is the meridian line, this is the skin. We have to be able to go in a certain depth to be able to touch and get to that meridian, that blood vessel, that nerve, uh, that, that tissue, deeper tissue level. We have to be able to go in. Um, we didn't just go in straight and then come out. Uh, they actually went in and there were stroking techniques in with the presser, pressing techniques. Original apakuho um, uh, pressure method. Apakuho is Anma's term uh, uh, for a pressure method. Uh, this is the original shiatsu uh, term for pressure method was apakuho. But inside of those pressure methods, uh, one of them was uh, Osatsuho. Osatsuho um, is the original method, if you will, of a press and, and tissue stroke. So it's actually a combination of two techniques, uh, Keisatsuho uh, and Apakuho. Keisatsuho is uh, uh, stroking the body on your Keisatsu and Keisatsuho stroking the body with light pressure and heavy pressure. Um, and then you combine those stroking techniques with a pakuho pressure technique. So you have a press and a stroke. Um, so you took all of these compartments of anma and combined them together. So a, a pressure technique uh, with vibration. Uh, so you have a, a paku shinsenho or a press where you have to be able to, oh, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> I have to zoom myself in on the zoom video, but I have to be able to vibrate my body by being able to, by being able to contract my tanden, my hara, as people say, but it's correctly called tanden. I have to be able to contract my tanden, bring that vibration up, that vibration up, and I have to physically shake and then be able to put that out even through the tip of a finger and I have to be able to vibrate that finger. So I have to be able to press in the body. I have to be able to press in the body, but then be able to make a, a subtle vibration at the bottom of that. Uh, these techniques are not found in the art of shiatsu, uh, but they are very old techniques and they are very much so uh, inside uh, the remaining schools of Anma. And I, I, I hope one day that uh, there could be a, re, a reconnection of Anma and Shiatsu, uh, like the Wonder Twins. 
I just showed my age. If anyone knows the Wonder Twin Powers, but Wonder this Twin Powers is, activate. This is why you are here, Billy. I, I want to leave some time for questions from people. Uh, so I'll open the, the floor here. We got 20 minutes uh, left here. Uh, if people want to have uh, some questions for Billy or some sharing, so that'll be great. Hit me. <laughs> I know Yvonne has a question. No, nobody has any questions. Uh, well, maybe to, to, to get them going, Billy, uh, how many, uh, I noticed on your website, you've studied, it's overwhelming almost to keep track of everything that you've studied on both on the martial arts uh, realm and the healing arts realm, uh, but maybe take us uh, through the healing arts. How many methods uh, have, have you studied? Maybe go through some of them. Uh, I know you mentioned Anmines. And yeah, I've studied, I've studied different uh, different schools of Anma, uh, both in the United States and uh, now primarily in Japan. Um, uh, some of those styles of Anma are, you could say, public school or institutionalized, uh, where you would need to go to a medical school, a medical institute, uh, in uh, Japanese medicine. Uh, institute and study that way, um, but then uh, through family traditions or family lineages, uh, there are also some amazing uh, doctors that have these forms of healing arts uh, passed on from family member to family member uh, in an unbroken lineage. Um, and uh, those, uh, those family traditions are struggling in Japan, uh, struggling to survive. They don't like to put themselves out there in these days. If you don't put yourself out there and have a presence, uh, there's so much, so many tools for putting yourself out there, like what we're doing now and Facebook and, and whatnot, um, that uh, for them to stay alive, they're going to probably have to innovate some of their thinking. Um, so I, I studied uh, uh, three or four different lines of Anma. Um, I've studied a few different styles of shiatsu, from Zen shiatsu uh, to informally, uh, I'm not licensed in Koho shiatsu, but I've been exposed to it for, I don't know, 30, 40 years. And uh, I'd really like to be able to uh, do that uh, training as well. And I know the top people uh, in those lineages of Hakoryu uh, in Japan uh, very personally. Um, uh, Shihan uh, master teacher uh, Joe Miller and uh, and uh, the current uh, head master of Hakoryu uh, Nidai Soke Okuyama uh, Ryuho um, and the amazing work that they're doing with Koho Shiatsu behind the scenes. Um, I've studied uh, forms of Seitai. I had another amazing teacher, Dr. Masaki. Uh, um, uh, uh, the founder of uh, Yumiho, uh, uh, Masayuki Sayonji. Uh, he was another great uh, influence on my life. Uh, he founded an art called Kotsuban Yumiho. Kotsuban means uh, your pelvis, but it means an essential pivot for your life, like the pelvis. If your pelvis is not correct, your spine above it uh, will always remain out of place. And uh, so studying with... Uh, uh, Sionji Sensei as uh, his student uh, was a great honor in my life and unfortunately uh, he was killed in a car accident uh, in Japan. Um, uh, I've, uh, and so his art is a form of uh, Seitai. Uh, through martial arts I've been exposed to uh, other lesser known uh, Japanese healing arts uh, that are in martial art traditions uh, and uh, so it's, uh, it's been a long road, <laughs> and I, I can honestly say that I still consider myself a beginner. Um, uh, nowhere near a master uh, from things that I've experienced. Um, uh, being able to walk down a long hallway, I think I was telling you this story. That was a great story. Walk, 
being able to walk down a long hallway to try to visit a, a Japanese doctor, if you will, um, walk up to his desk in, in, in broken English and Japanese, my poor um, understanding of the language uh, at that time, trying to say, hello, this is who I am and this is why I'm here and this is who sent me to see you and him just say, go away. After I just found it was very difficult to find his clinic, I'd walk up to him and then have to walk all the way away because he sent me away and then have him tell me to come back to his desk. I thought I was just being completely screwed with by a man. So I walk all the way down this long hallway, I walk all the way away, and then he calls me all the way back to his desk, turns around, turns around the, uh, a notebook uh, and says, please read this. Uh, and then I read what he had written down by the time I walk up to his desk away and then back to it. He had literally written a large portion of my life on paper. Uh, a region of uh, the United States where I was born, uh, my nationality, my background, things that people don't know about me that I know, he wrote down. And the level of paradox that you're thrown into when you experience someone like that, that can do these things for real, you can say energy doesn't exist. He is, is uh, you know, is all fake and it's, it's all pseudoscience. Well, when you bump into someone like that, you you now have you're thrown into the matrix of going. Wait a minute, this is really hitting my belief system, my faith so hard. I'm going to have to take a look at what I thought I understood uh, was even reality and possible. Um, and so bumping into some of these types of teachers in both Japan and India uh, has been uh, life changing. <laughs> uh, and where I can honestly say I, I definitely need a lot more training. <laughs> Thank you. Myself. I will be researching a lot more. I will be training a lot more. Uh, even what I think I've been taught is, is three lifetimes of homework. Um, so, uh, you know, whenever I practice on someone, I always ask them if I can have permission to begin. And I always thank them for uh, allowing me to practice. And I've been in practice for like 40 years, 30 years, something like that. Um, uh, I always thank them for being, uh, uh, I thank my, my patients, my clients for allowing me to practice on them. And they always like, what do you mean practice? <laughs> Are you still learning? And I'm like, no, you have to understand, you know, I mean, that's a nice bridge for being able to get them to understand uh, the type of philosophy and, and constant training way. Um, thank you for sharing that, uh, Billy. We got a question here from uh, Bioro. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, he's asking about um, if you can comment on the split yeah. of Anma between Koho oh, Anma and, Anma. and the emergence yeah, sure. of Anfuku. Okay. Uh, the emergence of Anfuku. Yeah, let's, we gotta touch on Koho versus Ginko. Koho uh, needs a number of things in Japan. Uh, there is a whole Koho. Uh, kind of medicine in the art of kampoyaku in herbology. Uh, but that, that's not the koho that I'm referring to. Koho uh, means old way, koho. Koshiki uh, uh, means uh, old or ancient. So we're looking at ancient forms of, of medicine. Uh, now, what that means is that there's uh, a lot of very esoteric practices uh, in there as well, uh, where people can chalk that up to being mythology. Um, I would chalk it up to being uh, a lot of spiritual practices uh, and a lot of dangerous practices even. Uh, I was telling you about uh, how there's lines of Japanese medicine that still very much so have poison medicine 
poison snake medicine. The snakes in the attic. Uh, and, yeah, uh, poison snake medicine as forms of medicine, as forms of treatment. The right amount of dose of venom uh, can cure, and we know the wrong dose uh, can take a life. So we have restoration of life and the right dose. Uh, the wrong dose, uh, the destruction of life. Uh, these these types of practices were removed from Chinese medicine, Korean medicine, and, ja and Japanese medicine in history. Now, now that brings us to Genko Anma. Genko means uh, like Genki, uh, means health. So the health way. Uh, also, it has a, a, a negative connotation in Japan, in its red light districts in Tokyo. A lot of Anma is abused uh, and is done for the pleasure way uh, in these uh, districts, in uh, the red light districts, if you will, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you have to be careful if you're seeking Anma training. Uh, you'll see uh, the terms up on uh, these these buildings, and uh, really, it's just you know, you walk in and you're like, yeah, great, this is like a prostitution ring, fantastic, not what I'm looking for, uh, and that is rampant. Uh, so this is the Genko, uh, 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 Genko Anma is uh, the health way where there's uh, the uh, Genko Anma uh, has, it's very interesting, has a, a beaded rhythm to the technique. One, two, three, and two, two, three, and four, two, three, and five, two, three, and you move on. So if I'm pre if I'm if I'm needing a point on the body, I I will need it with uh, what they call uh, juninho uh, or the kneading methods. So a paku juninho, a pressure kneading technique. Uh, a paku juninho is uh, the oldest of uh, some of the oldest techniques on planet Earth are these pressing and kneading techniques, but uh, you do it in a, in a beaded rhythm. So I'll press in on the body and, and massage it and go one, two, three, and two, two, three, and three, two, three, and four, two, three, and move on to the second tubo along a meridian. So you hit a meridian in a section, maybe in five points, but in four treatments. You open the point, you break through the sedentary layer, you treat the point, and then you have to close the point. This is not in shiatsu, uh, in newer forms of shiatsu anymore, but you see this in, in uh, acupuncture, uh, where you have to open the tsubo, you have to open the acupoint, you have to go in, get through the blockage, treat the meridian, and then you have to come out of the tsubo do you leave the tsubo exposed? You have to protect that, that point from the environment. Uh, this is not, uh, not primary of the teaching in the art of shiatsu that in my experience, um, but you'll see this in both shiatsu and anma. This is the koho way, uh, the ginkgo way, the, the health way, I won't mention the pleasure way, we know what that is. Um, the abuse of massage, which I'm sure happens in every country. Uh, uh, but the ginkgo way, the, the health way, um, just tries to have a boost to the body's natural healing uh, powers. Just has a boost in circulation, uh, but bone setting, uh, balancing the emotions, balancing uh, blood vessels and nerves, all the higher level of oriental medicine theory is not in Genko Anma. Got That's it. only to be found in Koho Anma. What prompted the split of the two? Do you, do you know? Yes, I do know. When Anma became uh, primary for the blind, that, that is how the decline of uh, Koho Anma happened and how the incline of what is uh, called Genko Anma started to take place. And it's actually uh, the Genko Anma uh, that uh, 
went into uh, some of uh, uh, shiatsu institutes in, in Japan. Got it. Uh, so you have Koho Anma, this big, <laughs> massive beast. Then you have uh, Koho Anma to Genko Anma to uh, Shiatsu. And so, you know, there's uh, this not, not so much a decline, but kind of a shrinking of the categories of what went into uh, the teachings. Uh, whereas when you look at what's in uh, Tom Pecky's work, you can see that there's so much uh, in here. And, and I know there's an effort uh, by Brian and others uh, to, to have this translated. What a fantastic project. Uh, but I, I, for the first time, uh, tried to translate uh, for people uh, the table of contents just from this, to be able to show people that there's more so much more than just so much more than technique than in, I, in I saw that the post uh, there's so much uh, juicy parts there in just the table of contents uh, I just have uh, time for one more quick question if uh, if anybody wants to ask it and maybe we can uh, touch maybe on the Anpoko question which we haven't I think uh, so maybe we'll start with that let's touch a little bit on the Anpoko aspect of the yeah, the question, uh, the emergence of it. An puku ryoho, right? Uh, so an, an puku, to puku, puku, uh, uh, your abdominal region, right? Where your, your organs are sitting. <laughs> this is, again, another specialization. There's so much interesting uh, perspective. And we would have to start an an puku history group to correct some of the things that I've heard. Uh, the same way that uh, shiatsu is a specialization from, from uh, anma, anpuku is also a specialization uh, from uh, categories of techniques in anma as well. Uh, so anpuku to calm anma anpuku. Anyone see a connection here in the terminology? There is a very deep connection between Anma and Anpuku. So uh, the art was created uh, with combining certain techniques to again make another specialization, spe specializing on everything that can go on in the abdomen that houses our internal organs. Um, so also huh, another thing uh, that we haven't touched on at all is in the development of uh, in the development of uh, Japanese forms of body work, you have the treatments that were given to royalty. So, what parts of of a princess, if you will, could you touch? Sometimes you were only allowed to touch the hands and their feet. So you have therapies where you have to treat the entire body through the mirror of the hands, treat the entire body through the mirror of the feet, treat the entire body through the mirror of the face, and to treat the entire body through the mirror of the abdomen, right? Because we have that teaching, microcosm, macrocosm, what we see in the universe is reflected in the body in small parts. So also if you understand that we're yin and yang, where yin and yang meridians turn around, right? Where meridians run and turn around in the body. These turnaround points have therapies specializing in treating these turnaround points. So we know that these turnaround points where yin and yang become and blend into, into each other, right? Like the taikyoku, the, the yin yes. and yang symbol. Yeah, symbol. Yeah. Right? So you have therapies that develop for the hands, the feet, the abdomen, the face, uh, and whatnot. And this is uh, some of the driving force of how Anpuku uh, was formulated. Uh, and then Anpuku and Anma were so high up there. And then, right, Anma starts to decline and go to the back. And now Shiatsu is coming to the front. So now you have Shiatsu and Anpuku, Shiatsu and Anpuku clinics uh, being propagated uh, in Japan. Um, 
And originally there were not many shiatsu uh, practitioners at all, or shiatsu schools at all. There were two. Got it. Where there were many schools of and and clinics of anma, uh, there were really uh, two. Uh, cool. And now it's you know uh, you can find shiatsu in many different places. Thank um, thank you for bridging that gap for us. Uh, we're running out of time here, and I wanted I wanted to thank everybody that joined us. And, and for your wealth of information, I know there's so much more uh, that you can share with us. I wish we had you here for, for hours, uh, but to connect with uh, Billy, uh, you connect to him through Facebook. I put a link for his Facebook uh, page here and also a link for his website uh, where there's tons of information there too. Uh, thank you so much for today. Uh, you definitely lit a light uh, in our history and a light in our community. Uh, I appreciate you, Billy. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Like I said, I really hope that Anma and Shiatsu uh, and other arts can really rejoin forces and, uh, and people uh, understand that there is no such thing as, as a graduation date or an, an end to our training. So thank you so much for the opportunity and for putting up with my ramblings. <laughs> I hope uh, it is in some way a small help for people. It was very informative. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next week. All the best, have a great weekend. Uh, be well, be healthy, and uh, keep on studying just like Billy is, is inspiring me to study even more. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>